How can we continue to make agriculture profitable? How can we manage to feed the world and sustain our planet? And how can I, a confused, broke college student, somehow contribute to the future of agriculture? Admittedly, these are big questions, and while I may not have the answers yet, my introductory into ag class has given me a peek into the types of fundamental challenges we will be investigating as students in the Agriculture Business Management Program at Oregon State University. In my introductory into ag class, our primary focus was listening attentively to guest speakers. Each speaker came from their own unique upbringing, had their own journey and reasons to pursue a career in agriculture, and brought their own individual perspective and advice. However, the biggest takeaways I had were the pieces of advice that seemed to be present with almost every person we had the privilege to meet. I'd like to share some of my biggest takeaways. A word used by almost every guest speaker was networking. That term means something different for each person, but to me, more than anything else, it encapsulates creating relationships, joining clubs, forming study groups, even simple things like making friends or introducing yourself to a business, all are seemingly inconsequential social interactions that can have monumental impacts on future opportunities. Time and time again I heard, one day your classmates are going to be your business partners. Now whether a classmate is your coworker, your boss, your employee, your finance manager, your clientele, lawyer, or president, only time will tell. But building those relationships, creating those connections is not only a good way to get your foot in the door, but a brilliant way to ensure you'll always have someone to go to in a time of need. The most intimidating but widely suggested advice by almost every guest speaker was traveling. Oregon State offers a plethora of once in a lifetime opportunities to visit corners of the globe one may never get the chance to see otherwise. Whether it's studying abroad, traveling with clubs, or even completing an internship, explore the magnificence of our planet when given the chance. Those who did say it was the best decision they made in college, and those who didn't said it was their biggest regret. Traveling is about more than seeing other places in the world. It's about extending beyond one's comfort zone, challenging one's own understanding and impression of the world around us. Probably my favorite subject speakers covered was the necessity to always be evolving with technology. This can also be an intimidating topic, but at the same time, a captivating one. I had the pleasure to meet speakers like Anna Jessie, who revolutionized her family's farm by creating a detailed website, introducing tracking technologies like AgWorld and Mavericks to better track labor, cost efficiency, and manage and scout her field by satellite images. I met other speakers like Darren Heller, who made the brave decision to convince his father to adopt new logging methods to be more economically feasible. Meeting people like him inspired me, because I'm going to school to learn how to make these same kinds of important decisions back home on our family operation. Without a doubt, my favorite speakers I had the pleasure of learning from was the AEC faculty panel of Dr. Christy Anderson Brecken and Dr. David J. Lewis. Dr. Lewis provided several intriguing conclusions and ideas that made me rethink much of my perception on the relationship between conservation and agriculture. Growing up, I had always attributed the objectives of agriculturalists and conservationalists as opposing, and that when working together, both would have to sacrifice in some form to reach a compromise. But Dr. Lewis provided several instances where when changing agriculture practices to be environmentally sustainable, we simultaneously were creating practices that were economically viable. Reaching the needs of both economic viability and environmental sustainability will undoubtedly be a major component of both my education in agriculture business management and the future of agriculture in itself. And rightfully so. The UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says the planet will reach the crucial threshold of 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels by as early as 2030, precipitating the risk of extreme drought, wildfires, floods, and food shortages of hundreds of millions of people. It is up to us, the future of agriculture, 
to be the change we wish to see in the world. 